Right, good afternoon. It's Sunday the um, Sunday the 22nd of January. Um, I'm not long back from church actually. Um, I love my Sundays. I play in the worship team uh, at uh, in Blidith at the Sherwood Forest Community Church. I play guitar and sing there. I'm part of the worship team. We've got a lovely worship team out there. We make some really, really good noises. But anyway, Sunday. Um, Sunday's not a rest day for me. Uh, I take my rest day Saturdays. Um, so, what I normally do is on a Sunday afternoon, if I'm not watching sport, I potter around the workshop, tidy up anything I've been working on this week, and I've got something absolutely, it's, a, it's something totally different. Um, I've never ever seen one before. It's a really, really, old, it's a bass, it's not a guitar, it's a really, really old bass. And I'm going to show you. It's a Burns. Really, really old bass, big massive headstock on there. And it is a Burns Vista Sonic bass, three pickup affair, um, a bit like a Stratocaster in a way. And here you've got you've got a tone, you've got a volume, and you've got a rotary switch here. And it's not bass, middle, and treble and all that. It's, you've got four settings. You've got wild dog, treble, bass, and contrabass. Four different settings all on this dial here. Anyway, it came in. Not working, only two of these things are working, and this pickup was working. So, went round, had a look, uh, find out what I could find out about it. Couldn't find out anything about this bass. I've talked to two or three luthiers, um, Clive Eastwood being one out of Beaver Guitars, and uh, Ken, uh, Ken, 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 Big Ken Guitar Builder, I can't remember his last name, Lincolnshire Way. Uh, his name will come to me in a minute. And they uh, not that Clark can tell me that, he just says, you know, it's going to be something mechanical, it's going to be something, either contacts on the road trail or blah blah blah. Anyway, I couldn't work it out, I couldn't really find any information, so I thought I'm going to have a go at fixing this myself. So what I, what I did was, I had a look, looked at the road trail, I think, couldn't see anything wrong with it at all. And Clive Eastwood had said to me, he said, get some really fine um, sandpaper, clean all the contacts, which I did. Uh, got 2,000 grit paper, cleaned all the contacts, still nothing, and then, it was then I discovered there was a wire off on the rotary. The reason I couldn't see it is the wire hadn't moved, it was still in the same place, but the solder bit underneath, it had come off. So, given that a re-solder, re-soldered the earth wire, tied it up the electrics, tied it all up inside, and um, it works absolutely fine now. So what I've got to do now is, um, there were no odds barred on this. The owner come to me and says, I don't care what it costs, I don't care what you've got to do. He says, get it working, whatever it costs, no, no, you know, get it working because I need this for the band I'm playing in and it's, it's right for the part, for the period, uh, the way we dress and the way we put ourselves about. So what, no matter what, no expense made, get it working for me please. I've got it working now, so all I'm going to do now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to strip it, I'm going to get a complete setup, including a fret polish, bit of a fret level, we've got some very warm frets at the uh, base end, the, the headstock end there. Um, we're gonna, we're just gonna give him a skim over, try and get them all level. I might recommend for the future. He has a refret on this, uh, but we'll get away with how to refret right now. Frets are pretty okay. I'll get them, give him a bit of a skim over, give him a bit of polish. We'll get some oil in the neck there. I'll get the radius done on the bridge. A very strange bridge of this one. Very very different. What I'm gonna do is, while you're sat here, I'm gonna actually take the scratch plate. Sally put on with four screws. Now I'm going to turn it over, I'm going to show you the electrics, I'm going to show you the bridge on the guitar and blah de blah de blah how everything works. Because it's a completely new uh, guitar bass to me, this one. But anyway, we're going to get cleaned up, it's going to be completely working, we're going to get set up superb, it's going to play absolutely mint, it's going to sound mint, and it's going to be absolutely rock solid. We're going to get a good polish, a good clean. We're going for the full 70 quid setup on this. Um, old shebang, rebuild from the back up. So basically strip rebuild. The only thing I'm not going to do, I'm not going to take the neck off. Not going to do the bolts on there, there's no need to do that. Test all the tuners, blah de blah de blah. So what I'm going to do is, while you're uh, watching this, I'm going to turn the camera, focus it onto the base itself, and uh, you'll be able to see um, the gubbins inside, and I'll be able to show you a lot clearer. So, like I say. If I bring this, I'm going to bring the camera. No, I'm not going to bring it down. I'll do there. Bring, basically focus on this far end here because you don't need to see the stock end. There you go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the scratch plate. Like I said, I'm going to put four screws in just to show you how the gubbins works inside, and then I'm going to plug it in. Um, everything's in this pot here. 
There's a shield here also for the bridge, which we're going to put back on later. We'll get that all back on there. Beautiful. I've got no idea. There's a plate sits here. I've got no idea what it is. Maybe it's for resting your hand if you ain't got this gubbins on. I don't know. This cover. I've absolutely no idea. It's like a. Uh, where is it? This chrome plate there, it goes here. Screws into the guitar, sits on this plate here. I don't know if it's an rest or what. Finger rest. Absolutely no idea. I know you. Not worry about that. So I'm going to show you the innards of this. You see, I've polished the. Um, I've cleaned all the scratch plate. I've polished the pickups. They're all nice and shiny and chrome in there. The actual pick guard actually looks brilliant, looks brand new. You don't know it's not brand new. I'll tell you why it's not brand new, because it's, it's been fixed. It was cracked, split, it's been glued back together. So it don't look brand new, but it actually looks really, really nice. So what we're going to do is... There you go. I'm going to show you inside. And there you go, there's a rotary switch. You've got your four-way. Your three pickups, blah blah blah. You've got your rotary switch there, you've got these big two gubbins here, I don't know what they are. Um, I have absolutely no idea what they are, what they do. You've got your tone pot there, you've got your volume pot in, you've got your input there. Earth wire I soldered back on, which will come off. One of these wires would come off here. Let's see, should I zoom in? Uh, let's quick zoom in. You might get a better idea if I do zoom in actually. There you go. I'll take that just a little bit. So there you go. There's a rotary switch, four-way. All these contacts have been cleaned. Uh, underneath, on the top, this plate here. This wire's been resoldered back on. This wire's been soldered back on. Checked all this wiring. Checked all the solder joints. Rewrapped all the wiring. Keep it all nice and neat. Clean the inside. And uh, that is all ready now to go back together. So we're going to pull this wiring out of the way there. Slide the plate back on, and that's it. That's job done with that. So we can fix this back on now. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the radius. Make sure the earth wire's going underneath. It is all right. There's good contact in there. I'm going to clean this all out. I might even remove this bridge. So there's three screws in there holding that in. Give it a good clean. Get all the dust off it. I'm going to polish the frets. I'm going to oil the neck, and we're going to check this. We've got zero fret down here. Down at the centre. My way for it. We've got zero fret down here behind this nut. So we ain't got to worry about the nut slots being too deep because we've got zero fret, which keeps it above these. So we're going to polish all these, blah, 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 get it all clean, get all the tuners set, make sure the strap pins are in tight. That wasn't. I'll check, I'll actually take these off and I'll check that they're all absolutely bang on because we don't want, we don't want a strap falling off or a strap pin falling out. I'll tighten all these. So what I'm going to do, why, this is why I put the camera down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in. It's just plugged into my Yamaha THR10X. Oh, I've got a connection there. We'll plug it in. Volume on full, tone on full. Right, we're going to put it on. Wild Dog. Now, Wild Dog, I believe, is this pickup or this pickup? I'm going to prove that to you. Um, there's something to tap it with. We'll go with screwdriver. That one off. There you go, so that's on, that's on, tone. Volume. So there you go, then we put it onto the treble. Now, by rights, the treble should be just that one. Give it a go. Go. Then we're going to go on to bass. Odd leather bass, it's just this one on its own, I believe. Nothing. Oh no, bass is that one and that one. So bass is these two, and then we've got what you call contra bass. Off, off, off. So super bass is just that pick up. Check the tone again. Volume. So that's it, we're all working. Contra bass, bass, 
treble and wild dog so wild dog's m2 contrabass is m2 there you go treble bass or bass is m2 contrabass is that one so that's it all four configurations work in there so it's a job well done uh, it's what he wanted all we're going to do now is make it supremely playable by um, giving it a good setup not all that issues, not so much issues, but rather dings and dongs this bass. There's a big ding here on the 12th fret. I've never seen this before, but I've not really looked at this bass to be honest with you. There's a ding there. And let me just move the camera back. That's our wizard back on me. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Should be about right. So who knows why I talk to you, why I sit here talking, so I'm going to bang a couple of screws back in this scratch plate, hold it in place, and I can show you, I can put the guitar up, show you the front and back. Blah de blah de blah. Da 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 So yeah, Sunday's for me, uh, really, I love Sundays. Get up nice and early, I normally get up about 6, 6.30, get myself all cleaned up, get myself prepared for worship. We normally do about 13, 14 songs in worship, we did 13 today. And if there's any I don't know, I'll go through them all early doors. If I don't go through them on Saturday, get familiar with them, I'll go through them a little bit Sunday morning. Uh, I'm pretty much up there with that now, so I uh, don't spend a lot of time doing it, but I love doing it. Anyway, and then I come and potter about in the, uh, in the workshop, tidy some things up, get some things ready for going out tomorrow. I've got two guitars possibly going back to owners tomorrow this one will do one right there anyway here's the bass it's a burns like i say burns vista sonic from about dates from about 1962-63 it's in okay condition uh it's got some kind of weird adjustment on the old neck at the back i've got no idea what that is absolutely no idea i wouldn't be sold ever plate on there all right, straight to wood, but it's the way it is, so I'm not going to touch it, I'm not going to alter, I'm not going to mend what's not broke. There's the back of it, it's got a big chunk, a big whelp in the uh, 12th fret there, or just where the 12th fret is, so it's been knocked into summer. There's no to worry about, it's not structural, it's not going to cause any damage anywhere. Um, so, like I say, what I'm going to do with that is get it all set up, get the action right, uh, and get the action not super low, but get it relatively low. I can't go too low because I know down at this uh, zero fret end there's not a lot of clearance above the first fret. But we don't want to go, you know, we don't want to go too high. One thing I do like about the bridge on this, which I'm going to take off while you're here, and I can show you, it's a roller bridge. Very early one. Um, I actually really, really like the design, so bear with why I'm sat here. I've got to take these three screws out. Da, 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 da. And a nice touch on the bridge there is um, on the bridge cover. It's not just screwed into the wood, but actually inserts in there that screw you bolt screw into. So it's a nice touch. So there you go. Here's the bridge. Da, 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 da. The reason I took this off, it's easy for you to see. Nice rollers here. Look, very very nice touch. Now, the other thing is, oh, bit of, oh right, I get it, I get how the roller works as well. You can move it left and right, look. So you can space your strings even better. That's great, it's a good touch. That's good, so I can space the strings correctly. The good thing is I've got, I've got a string spacing tool measuring thing there. So there you go, nice rollers on there. Looks in really, really good condition. I'll get the intonation set and everything, blah de blah de blah, get this cleaned up, get all this dust off it. Get it back on the guitar, make sure the earth connection's working properly. Um, absolutely brilliant. So that's it. There's not a lot more I can tell you about this bass. Um, I'm going to blob on me this afternoon, take it, I'm going to bang snooker on. Take it nice and easy. It's, what time is it? It's getting on for four o'clock now. It's time to get dark. I'm going to have a nice relaxing night. I'm going to have early in tonight, watch some movies and stuff with wife. Uh, have a good time, have a good relax, and prepare ourselves for a new week. So, I'll be back with this tomorrow. Show you where we are, where we're at, and how it's all gone after the setup. Talk to you soon. Right, good morning. Um, it's Monday morning, 23rd of January. Um, I've got my Fido Castro hoodie look today. Uh, a bit rebellious, 
bit chav, you know, you know how it works. Anyway, that aside, uh, getting back to the Burns base. Um, I did another video on it, but I've accidentally deleted it. So I'm doing this video again. So what I've done is I've got the base actually completed, finished. Um, there's the cover back on, the pickups are all done, everything's polished, everything's cleaned. I've oiled the neck, polished the frets. I've also had to level these frets down. I did, definitely, I did three down this end, uh, needed re-crowning, levelling, re-crowning, uh, which have all been done. They've all been highly polished again. Some damage on this 12 fret, which I've not worked on because it doesn't impede the playability of this base. Um, I've had a look at the action. The uh, radius on this is really low, seven and a quarter, like a like a like a Fender, a Fender guitar, a, a vintage Fender. So I've re-radiused um, the bridge here. These saddles, by the way, they've got uh, they've got roller saddles on there. They move left and right. So I've spaced the strings right. The base itself is bang on, but it, like I say, it wasn't without problems. And um, if I show you the neck, you'll now notice down the length of the neck there's a little tiny bit of relief in there. Now, when I got it initially set up, there was a bit of backbone there, and I thought, well, I'll alter the truss rod. So I went to look for a truss rod, couldn't find it. Then I remembered this hole in the back, this thing here, and there's an adjuster in there, and that is the truss rod adjuster. It's called a gear o -matic. And rather than explain it, because basically what it is that you've got a gear ratio in there that alters. You've got the thread of a truss rod and you've got a gear around it and as you spin that it turns, it moves the truss rod forwards or backwards like so. Yeah, I know it looks rude but it's not. And that turns and it moves it forwards or backwards. So you turn um, that little sprocket inside that hole. Now the thing is, you need a tool for that. I don't have that tool, so I had to build something up. But I'm going to show you basically how the mechanism works first. So I've got to take you over to the computer. So let's have a look here. Now, this gear matic system Basically, it's easier to show you than it is to explain. So I'm going to take you over to the computer. I've got it all up there on screen. And if you can see there, there's the hole. And there's a key there. And that key fits over the top of the adjuster. And you turn it left or right. And what that does is, that alters the thread. Now, there's the instructions. And I'm going to hold the camera there. So if you want to read the instructions, you can pause that and possibly read it. Then I'm going to show you the mechanism itself, and there you go. This is the bit that sticks up in that hole, and you have to turn that. Now, I didn't have this key to turn that. You turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise. There's the thread of the truss rod, and whichever way you turn that determines. There's your gear, and when it determines where it goes up or down, or basically left or right, like so. So that's how you hold to the truss rod on these things. So bear with me while I go back, and I put my camera back on its stand. And uh, I'll keep talking while I'm uh, doing that. And there you go. So I didn't have, don't have that tool. So this is where we improvise. This is what's great about my job. Um, as guitar techs and that, I mean, I've spent a lot of money on tools last year. I spent over a thousand pounds on tools uh, because we have to go specialist tools. We get the best. And sometimes if you can, it always pays to, if you can fashion your own tool or make your own tool or use your own devices to do a job rather than go and spend, that tool's 120 quid for one job. Don't think so, Nella. It's not happening. So what I did was, I was thinking, how can I get my... I, I've got to try to get some pliers on it, and it wouldn't turn. It was too stiff. So I decided what I was going to do was not only get some pliers, say that's the truss rod tool there, and that's the bit we need to clip on top. I put my pliers on there, then I put a mole grip on top, and I hold it tight. And now you see, what I've got is, I've got a turning handle to turn that any way I want. And that basically, that's what I, well it's not basically, it's exactly what I did. And that's the way it works, you see, we can turn it left or right. And I tell you, you have to turn it quite a lot. I must have done it about 10, 12 turns, maybe more. Uh, maybe, le maybe less, I don't know, eight turns, whatever. But it worked. And I've managed to get some relief in my neck, so that means I'll be able to drop the action a little bit. So that's done. Um, also with this you've got a zero fret. Now the zero fret's pretty low, so we're getting a little bit of buzz. And there has to be a little bit of a trade-off. Trade-off if you're getting a bit of buzz down the uh, down the neck end there with that zero fret. So normally I'd take the action a little bit higher here, but I didn't really have to do that. I compensated by putting a little bit of relief in the neck. Now I've had to do it by eye uh, because I do have, I have four of these, eight different sizes, seven different sizes. Neck, check the level of your neck. These grooves go over your frets and you can check the level of your neck, see if it's level or not. Now, come to gain this on here, 35, 34 inch one, 
34 one side, 35 the other, too big. I thought the scale length is not right, so I measured it. The scale length on these is 31 and a half inch. Now I don't have a 31 and a half inch, and I'm not going to buy one at 30 quid just for one base, not right now. So it's something I'll look at in the future. But so I did it by eye, and I'm pretty good at doing it by eye. I've been doing this, doing this a long time. I'm a bit of an next specialist. So it's all done. Um, once I've got all that all back together, bloody bloody blah, like I say, polish the frets. I had to recrown three frets down at the uh, headstock end because they were, they were a bit bumper, a bit Loch Ness Monstera. Uh, roll as level as I can get them by eye. Uh, they're great. The guitar plays with no buzz. We've got the action on the low E. I'll just measure that. We've got it down to two and a quarter mil above the 12th fret, which is really, really good. We could go a bit higher. Um, so the action all across is between two, two and a half millimetres above the 12th fret, from the, bottom, from the top of the fret to the bottom of the strings, between two and two and a half mil. That's really, really pretty good. So uh, if we do get any buzz, we'll iron it up a bit. I've tested the pickups. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to plug it in. Uh, I had it plugged in overnight, or last night, sounds fine. Uh, all the pickup selections work everywhere, the tone works, the volume works. As you can see, I've cleaned the guitar best I could, get it a good polish, best I could, using some Carnuba wax, uh, the Dunlop 65 stuff, I'll get it a good clean, set a wipe over. Got a couple of issues here and there. Personally, I would go with bigger frets on that. I think them frets are a little bit small for a bass. Um, but, you know, if it plays all right, why fix it if it's not broke? I'll discuss this with the owner when he comes back for it this week. He's coming back for it. So that's it. It's a Burns London Vista Sonic bass built between now, nah, built between 1962 and 1964, I believe this model. But then again, I've heard that Burns London only started using that name from 1965 onwards. So I could be wrong about the date. But I know this guitar should have been built round about them dates, 62, 64, and we're thinking 63. So what the crack is with the um, Burns London on the scratch plate, I don't know, maybe it's a later edition, maybe it's a replacement, or maybe they were using Burns London before 1965, I'll have to go and check again on Wikipedia to see what's what. So that's it, the base is done. Um, the bridge guard is back on, um, it's all set up, it plays, it's ready to go. Uh, I've tightened up the tuners, blah de blah de blah. Uh, this, by the way, is not plastic. I'd imagine this is stuff like Bakelite, which is your old telephones used to be made of this kind of gear. It looks a bit plastic, but it looks like Bakelite, so who knows? It might be plastic, early plastic. Anyway, that's it. Another one done. I've got another one to be cracking on with in a minute. So uh, this one's tied up. Um, we'll come back to the owner this week. Um, I'll get him to leave a review and I'll post the video on, um, on YouTube and on my Facebook channel later. Until uh, I see you again, be good to each other. And I'll see you soon.